What's going on, everybody? Mike Samich coming at you for RacingDudes.com. And I wanted to come back and talk a little bit about what's on the line for Flightline here in the Breeders' Cup Classic coming up in just a week and a half. Really interesting spot for Flightline because he is being tabbed as one of the greatest horses ever. And that buyer speed figure of 126 is the second highest buyer ever given out since they put that number out. And so he definitely has the talent to be considered up there. But what's it going to take? Because this horse didn't run as a three-year-old in the classic distance races. Didn't run as in the wasn't in the Derby, wasn't in the, the Belmont, didn't run in the Travers, wasn't in the classic that year. His first grade one victory was as a three-year-old, but it was in the Malibu at seven furlongs at Santa Anita. So this horse has a lot of work to do if he wants to be considered one of the greatest ever. You have some flash in the pan horses who are phenomenal. Arrogate comes to mind right out of the gate, breaks a track record in the Travers, wins the Breeders' Cup Classic, ships overseas, phenomenal win over in Dubai. But his flame went out pretty quickly after that. And if you stack him up resume-wise against some of the other horses we're going to talk about here, he just doesn't live up to it. Flightline's opportunity to try and become or have one of the greatest resumes ever is all about this year's Breeders' Cup. And if he runs next year, next year's Breeders' Cup. He's got to run as a five-year-old if he wants to be considered one of the greatest ever and ascend to that Mount Rushmore level of horse racing. And when you go back, you look at other horses who ran in the Classic, who tried to stamp their hoof prints right there as well. It kind of starts out in 1989 with Sunday Silence, who ends up winning the Breeders' Cup Classic after winning the Derby, winning the Preakness, running second in the Belmont to Easy Goer. Easy Goer comes into the 1989 Classic at 1-2, to two, your heaviest favorite to that point in the Classic, and gets denied by Sunday Silence, who ends up winning Horse of the Year and unfortunately is forced to retire at four. And that's why he was never able to repeat or even get the opportunity to repeat in the Breeders' Cup Classic. He retired after running 14 starts, nine wins, five seconds, definitely one of the best horses to ever run in the Breeders' Cup Classic. You fast forward to 1995, and we get to see Cigar, the great Cigar, who the Breeders' Cup Classic was his ninth victory in a row, the majority of those grade one stakes. He did come back and run a second time up in Toronto at Woodbine in 96, and ended up not being able to win. Alphabet Soup got the job done that year. He had the chance to stamp himself as, in my mind, one of the greatest horses ever. At the, at the point that he won his Classic, it was the stakes record. He was just phenomenal. Unfortunately, couldn't get it done twice. And that's really what we're going to need to see from Flightline here if he wants to ascend to that level of greatness. You move forward to 2000. Tis now. Wins that 2000 Breeders' Cup. Has a ton of issues afterward. Wins the 2001 Breeders' Cup. He is probably one of those superstars that you'll consistently see. And that 2001 call is one of Tom Durkin's best calls he's ever made. That was at Belmont Park right after 9-11. And Tis now wins one for America as he denies multiple European horses and really wins a, a massive stretch battle, which it looked like he was going to get beaten. And he had a rough year going into that. I believe he was only two of five going into that start that year and had some injury issues as well throughout his five-year-old campaign. So Tis now gets it done. And he is considered one of, if not the best horse ever to run in the Breeders' Cup Classic because he is the only horse who has ever won this twice. And that, again, is what Flightline really has to do. We had Curlin who ran in this race. He was able to get the job done once. He comes back again. Not He gets denied at Santa Anita Park. I was there that day. And that was a, a tough one to watch because you wanted to see Curlin ascend into superstar. I mean, he was already a phenomenal horse, a star horse. But if he could have won that second classic, he again would have been considered one of the greats of all time and put up on that pedestal because of those two classic wins along with how good he was as a three-year-old in those stakes. It's been phenomenal to see him as a sire come back. But for my money, the best horse we've ever seen run in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and really the best horse that we've seen as a Breeders' Cup horse with that resume, is the great Zenyatta, who was able to win the Distaff as, at, a, at three, and then comes back at four and runs in the Breeders' Cup Classic and absolutely romps at Santa Anita, misses the break, massive turn, move around the turn, swings six, seven, eight wide down the lane, and is able to run down a fairly good field to win the Classic, comes back, and runs at Churchill the next year. Again, I was fortunate enough to be in the, the crowd when this happened. I have never heard a quieter crowd just go from, from just jubilation to, to heartbreak so quickly. Was that Zenyatta loses by a nose, to blame down the stretch. You can hear it in the call from Tom Durkin. He didn't want to call blame as the winner, but he knew blame got the nose down there. Zenyatta just misses. Looking at Lucky. Here comes Looking at Lucky. Edged us in there. If she had been able to win that second Breeders' Cup Classic, and this is why horse racing is so rough, she loses by this much. If she wins that second Breeders' Cup Classic, she's probably considered the greatest horse of all time because of those wins on top of the win streak that she had been on coming into it. So really tough that that knows, that distance cost her that, that level in horse racing. And now, why is this important? Why am I talking about this? 
Because since then, we've not had the opportunity to see a horse that could be a flight line, that could be a Zenyatta, that could be a Tiznow, that could be a Cigar, that could be a Sunday Silence. We have an opportunity at this year's Breeders' Cup to see a horse that could be generational. And flight line, if he puts on a show, the crowd will be going nuts on Breeders' Cup Classic Saturday. And he'll have a chance as a five-year-old to come back and be stamped as one of the greatest ever horses. To me, really, the greatest cop here is the horse that has put up the fastest buyer speed figure ever, and that's Ghost Zapper. His star shines so bright, but unfortunately, we only got to see him 10 times on the track. And the Breeders' Cup Classic was his ninth of those 10. He only raced twice as a two-year-old, came in and didn't start until later season as a three-year-old, ends up winning the Classic as a four-year-old, didn't go two turns until just two or three races before his Breeders' Cup Classic win at Lone Star. He's not thought of as one of the greatest ever because he did not get the job done twice in the Breeders' Cup Classic and because he did not run in the, the Derby, in the Preakness, in the Belmont. For flight line to be able to put on that echelon, he's got to do this twice. And he's got to have a phenomenal five-year-old season. And he has the talent to do it. Rarely going into a race do you realize that you could be seeing greatness before it even really manifests itself. And that's the opportunity that we have. If he is able to get the job done on Saturday in the in the way that I think a lot of us think he will, that five-year-old season could be a celebration season where if he continues to run at this level and stay healthy, you could see one of the all-time greats. But don't take for granted what we could possibly see at the Breeders' Cup in the Classic. This could be a, a generational horse, something that you could never see again, and we're going to get the opportunity to see it hopefully manifest, manifest itself into greatness on Saturday. Thank you very much for checking out this video and look, taking a look back at the past Breeders' Cup Classic champions and where Flightline kind of could rank in that list. Make sure you check, tune into this Breeders' Cup Classic. It's going to be one that you definitely do not want to miss. And make sure you're subscribed to the Racing Dudes video with all of the content we have coming up to the Breeders' Cup. And on that specific Saturday, we'll be live Thursday before the Breeders' Cup, Friday after the Breeders' Cup, Saturday after the Breeders' Cup to give you all of our picks and analysis and the opinions and the facts coming out of it. I can't wait to be at Keeneland. If you're there, make sure you stop by and say hi. We'll see everybody in the next couple of weeks. Good luck at the track. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best betting tips and coverage for the 2022 Breeders' Cup. Our wagering guides have cashed for thousands. You cannot miss our 2022 Inside Track Wagering Guide to the Breeders' Cup. So hurry up and subscribe, then go to RacingDudes.com, check out the free picks for every race, every track across the country, and the Inside Track to the Breeders' Cup Wagering Guide, available soon.